and welcome to the PHOI Eagles podcast. Back in Studio A, high noon on a Wednesday, Bo Wolf, Zach Berman, and from the jump, joined in studio by Matt Quinn of Mount Joy, uh, one, of the, one of the great musicians and one of the great sickos. Wow, it's true about sickos. I don't know about the great musicians thing, but thank yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for uh, spending time with us. Well, we're, you know, you are our, our tight end expert today, and I think it makes sense because on Friday you are going to be performing at the Zach Ertz uh, Family Foundation event. Yeah, it's been a it's been a whirlwind becoming a, a tight end guy uh, over the last week and a half. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm here for it. Well, you've got I mean a projectable body, uh, yeah. great hands. We know that. I think it all. I think it all I'm makes old. sense. Yeah, yeah, old so, for the position. Yeah. So we'll get to that guy from Arizona who's going to be like 26 <laughs> as a rookie. You, you and he can compete. Zach, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. This is this is such an exciting day to have to have Matt here. First time I've seen him since our airport encounter. Um, <laughs> That's so, right. So I'm on the screen for the show last year. Uh, I am admittedly not a big music guy, but I do listen to Mount Joy because mm. of the uh, PHLY Eagles. It's like show Bob Marley, Bob Dylan, Matt Quinn. And I was also saying Adam Sandler. I like his music. He has, uh, <laughs> okay. he has a Chris Farley song that I like, and he has a song wow. that he sings about his wife uh, and his kids that I like. Um, okay, there so you go. There, there you go. Um, but and, and and then uh, we were at Fletcher Cox's press conference yesterday. So excited to, to discuss that, and always enjoy talking tight ends. Right, like that's that's one of the positions that I I uh, look 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 forward to. I, I think it's can be like a matchup nightmare often. Well, we do know you so, think that. Yeah, positionless guys. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, what are the positions that you don't look forward to? That I don't look forward to? Good question. Honestly, I'm not great at evaluating interior offensive linemen. Um, mm. I, I don't always know what I'm looking at there. <laughs> so I, I watch it. But my, when, you know, when we have our interior offensive line show, I, I'm going to rely on our guest more than kind of my I, – I won't pound the table. Like, I really like him over him, right? But – um, tight ends. I, I feel, I feel pretty good. About and do ends. you generally have, uh, like a, a bit of a tuned up affinity for people you meet in your life who have the same name as one of your brothers? No, I have a lot of brothers, so it's not, well, it's, I know. That's what it's, I mean. it's not, I have no, I have it's like 40% of the no, I, I, I have an affinity for like meeting real talented people, people who are mm. some of the best at the world at what they do. Right. Um, and that's, that's what, uh, Matt is in Mount joy. Like wow. I, yeah, people who I, trust when it comes to music <laughs> speak very very highly of of mount joy i it, it would be offensive to mount joy for me to say like you guys are great because i don't know music um but you did just call us one of the greatest <laughs> <What's that? laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding yeah. but people who i respect who know music uh say that and i enjoy listening to it and it's awesome to have matt in today matt what uh like where have you been we know we've talked before about just the like the nomadic lifestyle that that you lead sometimes where have you been over the past couple months yeah um working on some new music we were in los angeles um living at an airbnb for like six weeks so i'm very excited to be back in my bed here in philly um just played a show in jackson hole it was 25 degrees and Oof. snowing sideways um so you can't, like, it feels play pretty good here gloves on no my <laughs> fingers i said to the crowd my fingers were like frozen mozzarella sticks it was just <laughs> completely useless guitar action but it was it was a good time good, it's a good line frozen mozzarella sticks i don't know where that came from <laughs> I, should borrow, I should borrow that in like the you know when they play uh, uh a cold game in, in mm. metlife stadium one day it's, well it's not going to be green bay which we can talk about yeah. in, a, in a minute as well when you're staying at an airbnb for six weeks mm. what are uh like what do you miss the most and what drives you crazy the most Honestly, our couch, because mm. this was like an Airbnb that was like, it was like kind of a pig with lipstick situation where it like looked really nice in the pictures, but they had obviously like gutted their house to like allow people to rent it out. And they just had like the lowest common denominator couch, sure. bed, whatever else. And like, you couldn't sit on that couch, th you know, like you just like, yeah. you couldn't Was it like, because these chairs, oh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll open up the, uh, the door a little bit, a little mm. bit too deep. You can't like, if I'm going all the way back here. Yeah. You know, is it was it a was it a depth? For was it a, Cox. Was they're, it a, they're built for Fletcher Cox's. Was it a depth situation or uh, or like just a like straight comfort? Um, honestly, I wish it were as comfortable as this chair kind of thing. Okay. It, yeah. it it lacked depth in a crucial way where like you want to be able to lounge on the couch. Sure. This was like you were like you know you were like waiting for the doctor to bring you in kind of situation. Okay, yeah, yeah it was really tough. And there were like uh, magazines that were three years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About. yeah, like an arcade game that didn't quite work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. That's perfect. Um, I'm sorry. What was your question? 
<laughs> well, uh, well, there's a lot of things we'll get to. First off, have you ever performed in Sao Paulo, Brazil? You know, I haven't, but my wife is Brazilian. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. And um, we are very excited. And the one team we were hoping for selfishly, um, our manager, our Mount Joyce manager, is an enormous, he's from Wisconsin, he's an enormous Packers fan. Wow. So we, it came down to Browns, Packers, and it seemed like people were kind of saying Browns, I felt like. It so, seemed like that. So I felt like, oh, it's not going to work out because I was trying to rope him into yeah. coming down with us, but we're going to go. Are so, you? Okay. You know, it's an opportunity for my wife to get yeah. to Brazil and, and to see the Eagles. And we've like slowly started sowing the Eagles fandom into the Brazilians down there. And now okay. it's an opportunity to hopefully get them. Where is she game. from in Brazil? So she's from like extreme southern Brazil on the border of Argentina, like as far away from Sao Paulo as maybe you could, okay. maybe you could be. But, um, you know, it's not too hard to actually just her house is like an eight hour drive from the nearest airport to give you an idea. <laughs> Okay. So, but maybe we'll get some people up there and get to the game. Well, yeah, we're going to need some some tips on Portuguese from you yeah. if we can get that. So uh, so that's the news today. It came out this 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 morning that the Eagles uh are playing the Green Bay Packers there. It, it, it had been rumored like Matt said. There goes Michael Dunn in the thong. Yeah, a <laughs> Green Bay or or Cleveland, it is Green Bay. So Jordan Love versus Jalen Hurts. Love Hurts, as I was saying. Uh, in the nice. break room there, nice. and big uh, first time these two teams. Are, <laughs> <laughs> first two, first time these two. Way to sell it. First time these two, two te- these two teams are kicking off to open the season um, since 2010. So looking forward to uh, we'll we'll get into that, and then also you, the way you were saying that it's like oh looking forward to uh, the quarterback suffering suffering a concussion. No, I'm not saying yeah. that. I'm not saying that. And then as you mentioned at the at the, at the top of the show. Uh, uh, on on Friday night, Matt's performing um, at the Earth's Family Foundation special concerts at Brooklyn Bowl. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Yep. And I'm gonna I'll, be there. And you're gonna be that's that, yeah. I would be there. I'm coaching my son's football team, so I heard I about that. Otherwise, comes I, first. otherwise, I would. But um, I I will give a, a a shout out here on the show to the Earth's Family Found uh, the, the Earth's Family Foundation. They have the the House of Hope that way. <laughs> um, you know, it's in like uh, isn't it uh, sort of that way? It's in the northwest. The northwest section of Philly. Um, I got the north correct. Okay, yes. <laughs> Help me out. We're still on the east. <laughs> yeah. um, and so, uh, so uh, yeah, they've 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 done a a great thing. I I was I was there actually when they had their ribbon cutting uh, ceremony, and and they created um, uh, really a, a a place for people in in that community to uh, to um, have a a, a resource a- after school programs be together. Um, it's, it's a cool thing they're, they're doing. And, uh, I know Zach and his family, Joey and his, and his mother, Lisa are doing a lot of, uh, great things in the Philadelphia area still. So it's awesome that, that you're doing that, man. No, I'm stoked to be a part of it. We were talking about it a little bit. How, how different is this for you than like just a regular Mount Joy show? It's gotta well, be a little bit more nerve wracking. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Well, first of all, I'm an enormous Eagles, uh, all Philly sports fan, but enormous Eagles fan, obviously a huge fan of Zach Ertz. Um, and so that makes it a little more nerve wracking. And then also, yeah, it's like playing to a, a, a Mount Joy crowd is is a pretty soft landing, just playing the songs that people know. But I don't really know exactly what the client, you know, the who the fans will be and, and how much they'll know my music. So um, we'll see. What can, uh, you know, I'm going to go with my wife. What can we do to like judge up, judge up the crowd like? What can we do to get everybody going? It honestly, it, it really depends on the event. Like sometimes I feel like if it's like you're playing and it's sort of like, uh, cause we've done some like private events and things like that. And it's like, you're playing and it's kind of like you're in the background. You almost just want to be, you want to stay in the background. Yeah. You just kind of okay. like, you kind of keep it rolling. You, you don't tr- try to wrangle people in, but where it's at its worst is where you get the half and half of that. Sure. Where it's like, there are people really paying attention. And then there's like the other half of the venue is like not facing you and they're, you know, just having a good time. So then you're trying to like, you get the shushers, you know, mm. you get the like people uh-huh. who can't hear. So they're shushing and it just becomes, you become this like divisive figure in right. the room. You know? uh, but hey, it's going to be fun no matter what. The, but uh, I don't know. Sometimes you do need it. I was going to say no shushers, but sometimes you need a shusher. Okay. I'm willing to be a shusher. I don't think you want to be the shusher. <laughs> you're, you're too public facing. You know, you're, uh, you're, yeah. That, <laughs> I don't know about that. You're like that's that. Yeah, that's oh. now. There's a good question in the chat because there was the the clip that went around you uh, jamming with Nick Nurse. How did that come about? How did it go? Oh yeah, um, it came about because uh, Nick Nurse is uh, friendly with um, 
uh, a guy named Max, who is in a band called the Arkells uh, from his Toronto days. They're, they're a Canadian band that's like enormous in Canada. What does that mean, by the way? Enormously Canada. No, enormous in Canada. Enormous in Canada. Okay. I I think they're both enormously Canada (laughs) and, to be clear. Every every song begins with an apology (laughs) and ends with A. Okay. I'm sorry to to interrupt. Go on. Sorry, Max. And every song is exceedingly nice. Yeah. yeah. Exceedingly nice. Uh, He is exceedingly nice, Max, and a great musician. And uh, he was coming down here to visit Nick, I guess, and... um, and was like, hey, do you, you would you want to come like jam some covers at Nick Nurse's house? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we did. And there was like, and you know, he was set up. I guess they had the night off and he sat down at a piano and he's an awesome musician and a really cool guy and just cool taste in music and just played covers in his living room in his house for a few hours. And um, yeah, he's awesome. I, I can say like I've never met any other Philly sports coaches, but the vibe is like he's a cool dude and he seems to be a really good basketball coach, which is like I think we gotta get one. I like that. How does like uh how does an, an evening like that end? <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, how does it end? I mean, encore. N- n- <laughs> Nick's like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. Like I got well, he had a good tape, like kind of. He had a good out, which was that we you know, on the TV, uh there was a like a West Coast game, I think. Okay. And at the conclusion of that, or maybe it was at the conclusion of the East Coast game, there was like kind of like a timer on the TV, you know, as as a game. And that was actually Wemby. It was kind of cool okay. to watch him. I think it was Bucks Spurs before Adrian Griffin got fired. And Adrian Griffin, okay. of course, is a uh, um, I think was on Nick Nurse's Stand. staff. Yep. Right. So he was you know watching. It, he was watching it very intently, and uh, there was like an out of bounds, like after timeout situation. Like I, I got to watch him be like, ah, you know, he's trying. You know, and I was oh, like, that's fun. That was cool. And then when the game ended, it was kind of like, okay, let the guy go to bed. You know. Okay, I like that. Uh, before we get going uh, with the rest of the show, let's talk about some of our sponsors. If I can pull it up here with the m- way too many tabs that I have, we're starting. Zach. Have you ever seen that many tabs? With our friends. It's a serious amount of times, but I'm actually guilty of this as well. So Uh, It's tabs and windows because when we get to draft season and I've got like all these different spreadsheets that I'm looking at, you know, I've got like Howie Roseman's draft history. I've got my uh, like the position by position stuff. I've got the beast, which is up today, all these different things. And then within those windows, there are multiple tabs. It's a, you know, and at home, I've got the two screens. So it's a little bit more easy to deal with when I've got the just the one thing. It's completely unwieldy. But you know what's not unwieldy? Olipop. Olipop. We've been talking about it. They are our friends. You can see the signage behind Matt. Olipop is your answer for a soda that's good for you and helps that gut health. We need to fix that gut health, don't we? Olipop is available at Wawa. The flavors that you need to know about are their classic root beer and strawberry vanilla. Their two most popular flavors Two out of three Americans say they suffer from digestive issues, and 95% of Americans don't get the daily recommended amount of fiber. Olipop is tackling both of those issues with a drink that tastes just like soda. Research has linked some of those issues to poor gut health, so taking care of your microbiome may be one solution to your digestion problems. Use the promo code PHLY20 for 20% off your next Olipop order. The discount only applies to one-time orders, not to subscription orders. Olipop is sold online at drinkolipop.com. It's also on Amazon, and it's available in almost 30,000 retailers nationwide, including Wawa, Target, Sprouts, Wegmans, ShopRite, and GoPuff. I was driving the other day uh, through Conshohocken, through Fort Washington. I passed by two True Marks, um, and I'm thinking... This is this is this is what's great about Trumark is local roots headquartered in Fort Washington, 24 branches in the Philly area. They serve our community and our people right here at home. Of course, I'm talking about Trumark Financial Credit Union. When you join a credit union like Trumark Financial, you become a part owner, which means profits come back to you instead of going to the shareholders. There's better rates, lower fees, and a better return on savings with more flexible options. All the same digital tools and tech to make our lives easier. Becoming a member of a credit union has so many benefits over being a customer at a bank. It's a total no-brainer. Head over to truemark.com slash PHLY to learn more or find a branch near you. That's truemark.com slash PHLY, federally insured by the NCUA. I want a couple things on the Packers 
in Brazil. Yeah. For one, like a slight uh, downgrade for the Eagles that they don't get to play, as somebody mentions in the chat, like an NFC contender at home. Mm -hmm. It's a neutral field, probably not a thing that like the business side is happy about, that they lose a, the revenue of a Packers home game. But also, we, we've sort of been like hinting at this. There's, this. there's this situation in Sao Paulo where the stadium they're playing in, like the team uh, hates the, like their, their number one rival wears green, mm -hmm. right? And it's like a serious deal. You do not wear green around that stadium. And now they've got two teams whose fans are going to be all wearing green. Like it's like the, the league and the teams are like a little bit worried about this as a security issue. And now they pick the Packers to go play there. It's kind of weird. Yeah, that was actually one of the first things I, I thought about when I saw it, it was the Packers. I'm curious to see what the color combinations are on the field. But in addition to that, like we were texting about it, fans in the stands and and not just fans in the stands, fans around town. Yeah, that's what, right? I, that's like, what I would be more worried yeah, about. Like, yeah, like if, if you're going to the game, you're probably aware of the two team colors. But if you're just walking around Sao Paulo um, and you got Eagles green or you got uh, Packers green on, uh, um, it, it is something to think about. And I imagine there will be more coming out about this uh, as it leads up to the game. When, when you brought that to my attention a few months ago, I was like, this is, this is interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see. Um, as far as the other part, I keep hearing that, that like, you know, teams want to preserve the Packers game. The Eagles sell out all, the, all their games anyways. It's, it's, it's not as if, you know, it's, it's not like you're the, the Rams or the Chargers and, and you want those green, or the, the Green Bay fans are buying the tickets. Like, a, a matter of fact, I think in Philly, you don't want, um, you know, Packers fans traveling to, to your stadium. That said, from a competitive perspective, like, like you want the home field advantage against a team like the Packers. So I, have, I imagine that's not ideal. But from a league perspective. It's a marginal thing, yeah. Yeah, from a league perspective, this is, this is cool. And, and I guess the other thing, too, is if you're talking about you're giving up a home game, you, you want the neutral site venue to be very, like, or as pro Eagles as, as it can be. Packers fans. Well, that's what you're, you're taking yeah. care of that. But, but Packers it, yeah. fans travel. Like, so yeah. you're going to see, you're going to see cheese heads. You're going to see cheesesteaks and it'll be a, it'll be a fun atmosphere. You think you're going to see lots of cheesesteaks? <laughs> I was trying to oh, play a, like cheese, cheese on the steak. cheese. Okay. Yeah. I, is it cliche to go to a Brazilian steakhouse in Brazil? Cause I, I like Brazilian uh, yeah, steakhouse. I feel like that's a question for Matt. I'm not an expert on Brazil, okay. but uh, and I've never been to Sao Paulo actually, but uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, because I I love the Brazilian steakhouses where you have the yeah the uh, the red or the green, you know, keep yes, feeding the, me the authentic Brazilian experience. <laughs> the authentic, of the authentic Brazilian yeah. experience. That's right. That's right. Yes. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Fletcher Cox press conference yeah. yesterday, Zach. Um, what were your uh, what were your big? You know, we we raced over. We got there just sure. a couple minutes late. Yeah, which, was, which was too bad. And unfortunately, they started on time, which. I hate I hate being late. I had a, uh, a you know an expression in college that the dean of our school used to say, which well was, then it wasn't yours. No, that okay. <laughs> There's an expression that the dean of the school used to say that I've since repeated. Okay, which is better never than late. Meaning like you know if you're gonna be late, don't bother showing up. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. So, but I had a good reason. I was coming from the show that Fletcher Cox is a part of. Yes. Or, or, you I know, thought it was nice that he thanked his teammates and then sort of winked at us. <laughs> no, so in, 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 in all earnestness, um, I thought it was cool. You know, when I walked in, I saw like his entire family there, right? Not just, not just like his immediate family. Like his, he brought a lot of people from, from Mississippi. And he says, he, he, he said that these were the ones who were there when he came into the league. Yeah. He wanted them there when he got out. I, I, th I thought that was a cool touch. Um, him talking about, um, and he's mentioned this before, but the role Philadelphia has played in his life. Like when he came here, and I don't want to be, a, um, I don't want to keep echoing this or repeating this. I've been to Yazoo City. It's quite different than, 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 than Philadelphia. And he's said like he was 21 years old when he came here. It is worlds apart. And he had to, he, he said his mom said, you're not coming back, so you got to figure it out. And and he and he did that. I thought you asked, uh, you know, he he you asked a good question. He's spoken. I I hesitate saying good, like it was a poignant question. I mean, you never want to like um, it's it's sad when you speak about the death of your brother, right? Sure. But he had mentioned the connection he had with 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 Derek Barnett, who also uh, lost a brother during his time with the team, and um, and this this bond that that they have. And Fletcher says like. People say you'll get over it. You never get over it. Or like people say you you learn to you know you you never learn to live with it. Um, but um, 
And then, and then you asked him what Shadrick, his, his brother, would think on that day, and I thought he gave a real poignant answer to that. So, yeah, I, I think Fletcher deserved that. It was, it was more Fletcher's personality. He, he, he didn't have the one hour. He even joked, like, if you expect me to do one hour, I'm not going to do that. Right. Um, it was, it was kind of more to the point, but, uh, um, you know, he expressed appreciation for a lot of people behind the scenes, and he even went to the cafeteria afterwards. I saw the clip that the Eagles put out, where he said he's, he's going to be back for the wings. Um, so, yeah, good for Fletcher. What are your, like, uh, big Fletcher Cox memories, Matt? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I, I feel like more broadly, just, like, there was a stretch there where he was the best player on our team, I, th I yeah. feel like, for probably five years or so. I think that's right. Um, Certainly the Super Bowl team. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, like, I think for me, like, sort of learning football, growing up watching him be the best player, I think it, you know, probably an entire generation of Eagles fans will look at the defensive line differently than probably a lot of other sort of casual NFL fans. I think that's definitely his legacy here is kind of putting defensive tackle on the map as like a, a, a position of huge import here. So, yeah, I feel like I, if it's like the log line of his mem of, of his legacy, I think it's, it's easy to just say he was the best player on the most important team in franchise exactly. history. Right. Like, exactly. That's, that's a pretty good one. And he was also here for a very long time. Um, do you think he's got a, a you know, he, was, he sort of smiles about the Hall of Fame chance? Do you think there's a shot? I, it's, hard, it's always hard for me to say because, well, I'll put it this way. He has a shot. He was on the All-Decades team. And if you're on the All-Decades team, you have a chance for being in the Hall of Fame because, by definition, you're, you're, you're one of the best players of, of your era. There have been a lot of really good defensive linemen here. Fletcher, you can't necessarily measure it by statistics, right? He only had one double-digit sack season. Um, there are other um, defensive tackles who who have you know kind of more statistics, but if if you say all right for this period of time that he played, was he one of the best players in the, in the league? The answer is yes. Like the all decades team showed that, so he's going to have stiff competition. It's it's hard to get in. The Pro Football Hall of Fame is much harder to get into than like. The basketball hall of fame, for instance. Yeah, I mean, you or I could probably get into the basketball hall of fame. <laughs> well, maybe you, not me. I don't shoot, so. Um, but uh, it's like the easiest hall of fame. Yeah, to get into. but the bizarre. pro football hall of fame, it's like it's capped each year, yeah. right? Um, and so you have, uh, you don't make it one year, then there's all these other qualified people that come the next year. Uh, so it's it's not based on, and you know, like the baseball hall of fame is based on a percentage of votes, right? Um, right, and it's only yeah. five, and it has to be five. Exactly, yeah. and so it's it's hard to get into into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Um, but I'll put it this way: when they have the discussions, Fletcher Cox's name will come up in the discussion for sure. Yeah, I think realistically, it would probably be the kind of thing that would probably happen like f much further down the line. If sure. I had to yeah. guess, yeah. yeah, maybe with a broader context of the D tackles from yeah. this area. And 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 the last thing I'll I'll, I'll add too is. Um, it's rare in this game, like people, players say this, A, to go out on your terms, and B, to go out like when you will. You know, there's a lot of people who they retire because no one wants them anymore, right? Fletcher Cox, as you mentioned, is what, he might have been the best player on the defense last, last year. He could have kept playing. He, he said he's given all to the game, and the game's given a lot to him. But the other part is it, it was meaningful for him to retire with the Eagles, right? Like he could have played – two, three more years somewhere else if he wanted to. He, he probably could have played here, too, and, and done a, a Brandon Graham thing. I think it was important for, for Fletcher Cox to to retire being Fletcher Cox as opposed to uh, I, I can't see him playing. And this isn't as, a shot at Brandon Graham. As opposed to changing his name and retiring being <laughs> no, I, I, look, I, Colin Jenkins? This isn't a shot at Brandon Graham. Like, Brandon Graham's awesome. Brandon Graham's a different type of personality, and Brandon Graham wasn't always, like, the best player on the team. Sure. I can't see Fletcher Cox being – like your rotational D tackle playing 10, 12 snaps a game. Um, I, I, I can only kind of see him. I being agree with Fletcher that. Cox. Well, I also think this is like the, uh, you know, he has talked about, he is not like, you know, he doesn't go home on the bye week and he's yeah. watching football all day long. Yep. Like football is not his be all end all. Mm -hmm. And I th also think there's like a, a, an ego to it in a good way where, where he, he sees himself as yep. that level of player. Exactly. It might be harder to, for him to accept not being that level. Of yeah. Player, and and so. that's the point I was trying to like, he yeah. left, on his terms at the time he he wanted to leave and he just said it felt right and i think that's 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 why because in his eyes and in the eyes of everyone watching like he's fletcher cox and he wants to i, I think he wants that to be the lasting memory all right you ready to talk tight ends 
always ready to talk tight ends. Always. All right, Matt, you've been you've been crushing tape. Mm-hmm. Yeah, grinding it, grinding it. Um, you know, we 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 texted last night about it. We're checking out these these YouTube videos. Let's talk about the the guy who everybody wants to talk about at the top, Brock Bowers. If you are an Eagles fan and you and you're tuning in on draft night and the Eagles trade up, you know, four spots or something like that to take Brock Bowers, what's your reaction? I mean, I think I'd be pretty pumped. I, I, just on the fandom level, I know there's like the team building concern and whether that's a good use of draft resources is sure. a, a debate here, but uh, he seems pretty good. I think he, uh, and this is an opinion that doesn't matter, but I think he's he looks All small on matter. YouTube. I agree with Maybe you. Maybe it's just the frame of the YouTube video. Maybe in real life he's much bigger, but he looks small. He looks he looks a little bit small on the field. Uh I imagine he's going to be very good and this will end up being a poor take, but if there's anything, because everyone's just like sort of drooling over the guy, I think if there's anything that stops him from being an elite tight end, it's that he he looks a little small. He is by the numbers, you know, like a 23rd percentile height, 12th percentile weight for the tight end position. I, it is part of why I find the framing of him as a, you know, generational yeah. prospect a little bit odd. Like, you know, Kyle Pitts was, was different in that capacity. Right. Um, I, I mean, he's really fun to watch. Yeah. But I, I think you would be fooling yourself if you have any like real level of certainty that he's going to be definitely the best tight end from this draft class. Like I, I I'm not sure that Jatavian Sanders won't be a better tight end in the NFL than him or I mean I would take I would take the field of the class over Brock Bowers mm. yeah I mean I, I think oh I, I I would not actually I would take Brock well, Bowers over over the field I mean, but the Bro- numbers would Brock suggest Bowers that that is might, the wrong like, thing to do I, I'm, I, I haven't fleshed out this 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 take here um, but it might not be hyperbole to suggest that he's the best tight end in college football history in terms of like in terms of production yeah production like three time all like first team all American all, all three years um, you, unanimous, like two national championships, the top receiver on two national championship teams. Sure. Um, He's like the N'Kobe Dean of tight ends. <laughs> I mean, N'Kobe Dean wasn't the best linebacker in college football history. Okay. Uh, I hear what you're saying about the size. That's an astute observation. He's, he's not a physical freak. What he is, though, is just like, so productive, um, good at everything you look for in a, in a, in a tight end for the most part. And... I'm not saying spend like the number one overall pick on him. I'm saying that if he's, I'm not even saying trade up the number 10. I'm saying if he's there in the teens and, and I stand by this, if there's anyone in this draft who I say like this guy will be the, the best player at his position in the league, it's Brock Bowers. Marvin Harrison Jr. might be close, but Brock Bowers, I, I think you could say he has, he has a, the highest likelihood of, of being the best tight end in the league. I just think that we can have this guy. We we sort of have this conversation every year. Do we? Did you say that about Dalton Kincaid last year? No, but like, did you say that? But I think I probably did say that about Dalton Kincaid. We don't do this every year. Like, there history tells you uh, we can go back through the drafts. Like, how often is the first tight end off the board the best tight end from that draft class? Not very often. Um, and that's just okay, the truth. Yeah, that's what I'm the saying, history is. But but there are outliers in history, right? Like like how often do you talk about mm, the you first draft a team, draft keep drafting outliers, yeah, all of a sudden you got a I team full that. of outliers. Hey, exceptions that. Awesome, that, yeah. Well. Um yeah, I I think I mean I, off the top of my head, the the types of tight ends that have been talked about in this vein, Kyle Pitts, Vernon Davis, um, it's about it. I mean, not even Eric Ebron, who was a top ten pick. Uh, all big guys, though. What's that? All, all big guys. All true. big, 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 strong, powerful men. I hear you. And there. Also, Kyle Pitts was not worth that pick. Okay. Um, I mean, after year one, you would have said I would not. After year like, one, he was still taken ahead of Jamar Chase. Yeah, but okay. and Panay Sewell. Like, okay, yeah. I mean, I would have always taken Panay Sewell, but I'm saying after year one, like his year one was better than Devonte Smith's year one. Okay. Um, and if Devontae Smith was the fourth pick in the draft, you would have said that, that, I mean, that's a good pick, wouldn't you? Well, I mean, if they had taken him one spot ahead of Jamar Chase, I might not have said the okay. same thing. I mean, <laughs> I love Zach getting grilled for defending the consensus number one overall. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. This is, this is kind of, uh, I appreciate the, the uh, logical thinking applied to the show. Yes. Uh, but it's true. I, I, I will say one, one other observation about Brock Bowers that I wondered about 
the NFL thing is, um, and this is from YouTube highlights. I didn't watch a lot of Georgia, but it seems like he got a lot of opportunities that he won't get like jet sweeps and things like that. Like, I'm right. not sure we're jet sweeping with Brock Bowers in the NFL. Like, right. Um, it's like, like, it's fun to watch, but yeah. How translatable is that? I mean, it, it means that he's really good in the open field. Right. Right. And there's a reason they wanted to do that. I'm sure Georgia has other athletes. That'd be awesome for a jet sweep, but the fact that he was getting those opportunities probably speak to his athleticism. Thank but, you. Yes. But I, I, I was watching that being like, is he going to outrun like linebackers and safeties to the edge? It, it, like I just, some of it is like, he seems like he could be a, a Tim Tebow type, like amazing college athlete. Now that like my language. That really, uh, that really like, not, this is a horrible take. Cause I actually like Brock Bowers <laughs> and now I'm just getting sucked into the, into the anti Brock <laughs> Bowers. It's, it's a it's little bit, vortex. Yeah. It's a, but you can see how it happens. I right? you, you have to say something yeah. and you find yourself going down the path. Yes. And, and now you're defending, you just kind of keep going more and more you're yeah. just on a hill that you have to die on. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Welcome wait. to welcome to the show. All right. All right. Awesome. Well, I actually like Brock Bowers, but I, I do think there's a world in which you're right that he that he doesn't get those types of opportunities. And then as like a downfield tight end, he looks pretty awesome too, but a little undersized and maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I I think it matters that on what was the best team in college football over the yes. course of his career, he was the most important offensive option. Yeah, like that matters. He, but I also think that, like, if you watch some of his biggest plays, it's like he's he's wide open, and part of that is because he's on such a good team, and like the scheme is really good, and the other weapons are really good, and that might not be translate as as translatable. I don't know. I mean, he, I, I that this, might have been the same thing I, I brought this I up would the have other said day. about he Joe just, Burrow throwing. He to, came in you know, with Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. Right? He came like, in with it with, might not be the case. Yeah, with like Darnell Washington and. Darnell Washington couldn't get on the field over over Brock Bowers. George Pickens was on his team. He was the top receiver. Like, yeah, I think that matters. AD Mitchell was on his team. He was the top receiver. Jeremiah Burton was on his team. He was the top. Like Brock Bowers, the the, the Georgia staff was 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 basically like, let's find ways to get Brock Bowers the ball. Um, there's 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 so many. I mean. He was an academic All-American, by the way. Um, mm, yeah. Uh, All that wine he was drinking in Napa mm. didn't uh, didn't affect his grades. <laughs> I mean, I, I I know he was from Napa. I, I don't I don't know how, how much wine he he drank. I I just think that again. I I don't. I appreciate Matt saying that. Like I I don't know how I'm being pegged in the corner by defending <laughs> Brock Bowers. Um, I would well, say. Well, I think it's more about it's it, it's it's about the uh, yeah. like the degree of certainty. And also, like for the Eagles specifically, do you think it would be worth a first round pick? I do not. Uh, I mean, I would rather an offensive tackle because I think there's really good offensive tackles in, in this in this draft. But I think if if you said to me who has a better chance of being a uh, um, a first team All Pro, Brock Bowers or Fatanu from Washington, I would say Brock Bowers. Um, and if, if, if your operating principle is like, how can we get blue chip players? Brock Bowers has a chance of being a blue chip player for you. Better chance, I think, than Troy Faltano. Okay. Now, if you hit a tackle, it's better than hitting a tight end. But like, I, I've seen the Kansas City Chiefs win multiple Super Bowls where their number one receiver was their tight end. Um, Who they drafted in the third round. Yeah, but uh, so you're saying just because you can get Travis Kelsey in the third round, wait till the third round. No, for, I'm just. For a, a, but I'm, a, a, a there tight end. is not a great history of those first round tight ends. That's all. But so then, but 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 based on that logic, like Jason Peters was undrafted. So why don't you just sign a bunch of well, because like, the actual tackles. history of offensive tackles I, is not. I, that. I, I hear what you're saying. My 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 point is like evaluate the player, and the player to me is really darn good. It's going to be uh, interesting when like you introduce yourself to Zach Ertz, you guys meet each other, and you, you're come firing out like, tell me, tell me about Brock Bowers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, that's exactly. Uh, okay, the the consensus number two guy mm -hmm. who you've been a little bit all over um, in in some of these mock drafts yep. for the Eagles, Jatavion Sanders from Texas. Uh, Jatavion Sanders was uh, pretty productive during his time at Texas. Came out early, and I'll tell you what, I like I kind of like him almost. As much, if not more, not probably not more, but for the value, um, I do. Uh, great in the open field. What do you What do you like about him? Yeah, so I was actually surprised by the athletic testing at the combine because when you watch him, you say like, "This guy's a receiver in a tight end's body," um, and makes like he makes a lot of catches. 
yards after the catch, does a lot of that. And then about the same size as Bowers, to be fair. Yeah. Did did not run especially well. His spark score. Uh, I don't know how much you pay attention to the spark score, but 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 it would it it didn't stand out. Um that said, I I really liked him. I I in the first mock draft I did, I had him as a second round tight end and and that was more when I was just kind of going based on what I saw in college and he played on an offense with Xavier Worthy and AD Mitchell um and he was really good for 2 years there uh and I think he has a lot of development ahead of him um but I think this is a guy where if if you're saying like can you find a a high end starter I think Josh Sanders can be a high end starter there aren't that many tight ends in this draft who I think could be high end starters frankly I think it ends after 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 Josh Sanders, but um, if you said to me like, "All right, we we want a tight end. We're not taking Brock Bowers in in round one, but we're thinking Josh Sanders in round two, I would say, "Yeah, that's that's certainly plausible because I, I can see him being a productive player for you." Yeah, I think I would rather and and Tracer says this in the chat. I would rather have JT Sanders with the second pick in the second round than Brock Bowers at twenty two. Sure. I would I would rather have offensive tackle in in, in round one when Josh and Josh Sanders in round two than Brock Bowers in round one and pick your tackle in round two like hey so if you're kind of doing the package deals I would far rather that got a super chat from uh, Danilo who's who is I mean he must have just won the lottery because he is just <laughs> shelling it out over the past forty eight hours he says Snappy ZB is the best ZB I I appreciate Snappy in 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 what regard in like well you're gonna, you're gonna have to make him pay another super chat just to <laughs> yeah. answer your question. I, I I I appreciate the that, you in in the uh, Josh Sanders film you watched, Matt. What what jumped out? Honestly, the Josh Sanders film that I watched was around midnight last night. I watched a uh, a twenty five minute uh, just breakdown of all these guys, and I I'm gonna be lying to you if I remember specifically a lot about Josh Sanders, but athletic guy, right? Uh, young, yes. Um, He's speaking my language. Yes. I don't know what's his. Bo likes his, his young tight ends. Yes. I do feel like the Eagles specifically, like part of what I was saying about Brock Bowers to the Eagles is like they are they like to run the ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think having a tight end that's like a, a useful blocker, especially like they're going to, I don't know, they just got to say Quan Barkley. I can picture them wanting sure. to run the ball quite a bit. Quarterback can run it a little bit. Like I, I want a guy that is at least like a projectable blocker. I don't know that Brock Bowers isn't that, and I don't know about this guy, but I think um, – if you're going in the second round, you got Goddard in the second round. Yep. Um, got Ertz in the second round. I yeah. think that's a, a high price to pay for a tight end as well. So, yes. like, it better be a guy that projects to be a one. Um, Eventually, right. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, and in theory, projects to be as good or better than Dallas Goddard. Right. Um, because, you you know, you don't want to go backwards at tight end having drafted someone in the second round. So, I don't know. The, the guy I was watching on YouTube didn't seem very excited about uh-huh. this guy. So I feel like in general that his it seemed like this tight end class is is doesn't really have a lot of those one type guys. Yep. I think you were saying that. And in, and at that point, I'm fine to roll with Goddard and whoever you can get. Maybe maybe there's someone out there. I don't know about free agency or whatever, but that you can get as a good second tight end and and maybe punt this to next year. Well, it's interesting because the Eagles have had have actually had a good amount of success with like undrafted tight ends as. Yeah, depth guys, you know, from Trey Burton to Jack Stoll mm-hmm. uh, along the way. Howie has only used four picks in all those 12 drafts on tight ends. The two second round guys we talked about, Clay Harbor, your boy in the fourth, and then Grant Calcaterra in the sixth. So if you're looking for like whatever thread there is, it's only four people. But I do think worth noting that like the one spot where he doesn't seem to care about um, like power five pedigree, sure. right? Because you have Clay Harbor yep. and Goddard and even... Calcaterra at SMU is a little bit different. So I don't know that it matters in this class, but uh, just from Howie's history, not, not a ton to take. Yeah, and look, you, 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 you give him credit in that he's, he's hit on two second-round tight ends. And that would speak to your point about when you take a tight end, right? Like um, that there, have been, there have been years when first-round tight ends go, and, and well, I think you know, you know, last year Dalton Kincaid, TJ Hawkinson was the first round. I, I mean, we can go on. Uh, OJ Howard's probably an example of a guy who I really liked and didn't and, and did not pan out. So I will I will wear that one. Um, but I think that uh, yeah, I mean there's there's not much of a track record there, and part of it is because he hit on two picks that were your answers at that that position and tight end. For as much as we talk about twelve personnel, you kind of look at it like all right, the second tight end for you 
is a guy you can get on the undrafted market or late in the draft. Um, if you're drafting a tight end, you kind of want it to be someone who can eventually be a starter. Yeah, and I think, you know, as you have said over the course of the offseason, this is the age when the Eagles drafted yep. Ertz behind Selleck and when they drafted Goddard behind Ertz. So it is something that is at least on how he's mind. So let me ask you guys about, uh, I, I don't mean to Go ahead. jump in. The, I think the player who, who gets buzzed locally, um, and we're speaking about Canadians, is, uh, is, is Theo Johnson mm. from Penn State. What was the name of that band? The Arkells. The Arkells. Yes. Um, he probably knows the Arkells if he's from Canada. Like, I feel like that's a good bet. Okay. Is their, their, their number one hit, I'm sorry I spilled the maple syrup. <laughs> it's a generalization about Canada. Okay. Um, yeah, Theo Johnson, who Dane Bruhler has as his third tight end. The Beast is out today, by the way. Dane's a, a friend of ours, does an awesome job. But if you're talking about kind of like um, the, the Madden type tight end, 6'6, 259, 457, right? Um, so has, has, has that size, has that. Why at, are these guys always at Penn State? Uh, well, they have a type. James Franco yeah, knows what he's I guess so. Yeah. yeah, he's from Windsor, Ontario. I've been to Windsor. Uh, I, I, and? Won a, I won a few dollars there. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I was covering the NCAA tournament in Buffalo. Um, this was when my second year out of college uh, and had a night free and wanted to play a little blackjack. And so I uh, drove across the, uh, the the bridge to Windsor. Uh, I'm thinking, yeah, 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 that's 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 correct. Drove across the bridge to Windsor, won um, pretty quickly, left. Uh, <laughs> Smart uh, move. Yeah, made a... a uh, um, the wrong turn and was, and this was back in the days, like, um, you had Garmin in your uh, car. Okay. Pre like on your phone. Yeah. yeah okay. And, uh, it didn't work in Canada. So I had to kind of, uh, oh, wow. like the signal didn't, didn't work there or something like that. So okay. anyways, I, I make the wrong turn and I pull up and I get the most beautiful view of Niagara Falls, um, just by accident. And I'm like, this is my lucky night. Uh, and then found my way back, went across the, uh, I, I, I don't mean to deviate here. It's, it was actually a, a funny story. You go to border patrol or the, you go to the border and they look at your passport and they're like, you were here for 58 minutes. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I had a really good shoot. And I left and I think they were a little suspicious why I crossed the border for 58 minutes. Yeah. So anyways, that the gambling that's, assassin. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's my, um, Windsor story. You had a bag of insomnia cookies <laughs> in the front seat. I, I, I can only wish I can yeah. only wish, but yeah. Wow. Uh, so what's your take on Theo Johnson? Well, no, I'm curious your guys. They don't give mine. Yeah. Um, I was a little bit underwhelmed. No, I, I like, I like the idea of Theo Johnson. Um, I think our friend uh, Daniel Gallen is a is a Theo Johnson fan. I watched him at the at the Senior Bowl yep. and was just like a, a, a. I didn't see the athleticism play out necessarily, nor on the highlights. But if you're talking like, if they acquired a late third round pick or an early or an early fourth round pick, I, I could I could see doing worse. But I'm not I'm not like a jump pound on the table for Theo Johnson. Is he the Albert Ocomp? You know, he might be. And that's what I was okay. honestly thinking is like, there's been this mystery of Alberto and the Eagles yeah. love for Alberto is sort of mysterious, but maybe they've had these types of conversations and, and they've decided that it's not a great tight end class and it's worth sort of holding the Albert O stock to see because they like him just as much as any of these prospects. Mm. I mean, I don't know. I also, but it, it I could, I don't know. It just feels like after 25 minutes of research. Yeah. <laughs> It feels like uh, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of exciting guys. Almost the extent to which Brock Bowers is built up feels like a result of the fact that there's really no one else. Sure. I that's think that's fair. fair. I do like there are guys here who I think can play roles uh, and we'll get to some of them. But I, I mean, yeah, if you're talking like an eventual Goddard replacement, this is not a deep right. class. Yeah. Sure. So so my view on Theo Johnson is is that if you're you're just looking at kind of like the long term upside, he would jump out to me for. Uh, late, you know, they they don't have a, a late day two pick, but let's say day three, he's he's still on the board. He has tools you can project, right? I talked about the size speed combination. Uh, doesn't have the consistent production when he's at Penn State. That concerns you a, a, a bit. But if 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 you're saying, all right, who here has a ceiling beyond the top guys? I would say Theo Johnson. Well, because he's tall and he can jump. Mm. Got a high ceiling. Pretty. Uh, I'm pretty jealous of. Of both mm. those characteristics. Danilo is back, and he says, do you guys think that it's likely that Goddard is not with the team next season? 
By the way, Daniil, I appreciate this, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I appreciate you. Actually, Melinda your... Gates. <laughs> That's a good reference. Um, do, do you guys think it's? I I think Goddard's back next season. I'm not convinced the season. So if you're talking about like if we're at a point where this season, next season, it's kind of like this weekend, yeah, he's next weekend. Talking about 2025. Oh, 2025. Oh, yeah. I think there's a chance Dallas Goddard's not back in 2025 for sure. Yeah. Um, I would say, and especially if they draft a tight end early this year, or even if they don't, um, the way Goddard's contract structure, the the way, uh, you know, when you look at his age, he's coming off a, a year, like, it wasn't just the injuries last year. His He, he was his lowest yards per, uh, uh, per game since 2020, all right? So even in the games that he, he did play, he was not as 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 productive. So, yeah, I certainly think that's plausible. Well, Danilo, something tells me he's coming to some money recently, and I'm, I'm betting that maybe that's because he's been using rocket money and they're saving him money because nearly 75% of people have subscriptions they have forgotten about. And before I started using rocket money, this kept, this kept happening to me. I would yeah, see the bill and I'm like, oh, my God, I forgot to cancel this one. Frankly, there's, a, there's a, an old sponsor of ours from a from an, uh, different show that keeps hitting my thing, and, mm. I, and I finally got Rocket Money to cancel Roman? it. Very, <laughs> <laughs> not Roman, uh, but that's good. Uh, it's actually, it's the wine delivery service. Gotcha, uh, I'm and sorry, the, I and didn't the, mean And interject. the problem is that they need a signature for delivery, and I'm never at home. And so we kept like paying for this wine that just wouldn't come, <laughs> and they just send it back. I'm like, God. Come on. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I can't drink enough wine, so I got to take the Roman instead. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we've been trying to save money for a while, and it seemed like the bank account was stuck. Thank you to Roman for making it all happen. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when they use all of the app's features. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash P-H-L-Y. That's rocketmoney.com slash P-H-L-Y, rocketmoney.com slash P-H-L-Y. Uh, and before the show, we were talking about, uh, you know, the beer in the studio. And we said we're a Miller Lite show. And we're, mm. we're proud to be a, 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 a Miller Lite show because if you're hanging around, you know, listening to the great music from 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 Mount Joy with mm. your friends, you you're going to Brooklyn Bowl. You want to yeah, suck it back? Yeah. What what you're remembering might not be the beer you drank that night, but the time that you had, and that's what's great about Miller Lite because you enjoy the moments in life that matter most with a Miller Lite. You have the conversation, bonding with friends, and you have Miller Lite there. It's Miller time. What could be better? Uh, Miller Lite has more of the taste you want and less of the stuff you don't. It was the original light beer, and to this day. It's still the best one. Miller Lite keeps it simple. There's undebatable quality with great taste and only 96 calories. It's the beer that strips away everything you don't need and holds on to what matters most. A light beer that tastes like beer, less filling, and only 96 calories. The original light beer since 1975. Times change, but you can always enjoy the great taste of Miller Lite. Tastes like Miller time. To get Miller Lite delivered right to your door, visit MillerLite.com slash PHLY birds, or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories per 12 ounces. Man, I see like tap in your feet. Is there a, is there a, a tune in your head? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> maybe like deep in my subconscious. Okay. I don't know. I was actually looking around. There's this Gumby Allen Iverson thing, which is mm. like, there's got to be a backstory to that, but maybe not. Probably on FOCO. Probably a, fo <laughs> probably a FOCO deal. Yeah. yeah. What, what is actually uh, disconcerting is sometimes, uh, sometimes Bill Matz will wear the underdog mask. Mm. And and it's sometimes not put back, <laughs> yes. and so what will happen? I'll show you. Let's just do it. Wow! Look at this. <laughs> this is the most movement ever on PHLY. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> they will just be in the background. This guy. Oh, that's horrifying. Yeah, I don't even know if we yeah. can call that a guy. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I think there's a yeah. There's a whole political debate about what's going on. Yeah, there. <laughs> yes. sucking yeah. them back with your friends is what is what that's about. That. <laughs> That little red person there. So that's fun. Yeah. Um, all right. Day three, guys. Who do you like, Zach? Who's on your radar? Yeah. So uh, Jared Wiley from TCU stands out to me. Uh, now, Texas transfer, by the way, uh, went to TCU. Like, I mean, you're talking 6'7", 250 thereabouts. I got to pull up the exact number. Um, I think that he's, to Matt's point, he can block. 
Um, I think he, he can go up and get the ball. I'm not saying he's going to be a spectacular player, but he's, he's the day three tight end that stands out to me. The Eagles have, have looked at it in that program before. Um, I, I thought he did a good job in Sonny Dykes' system. Uh, then there are some kind of upside. Sonny Dykes sounds too much like a basketball coach. Mm. Uh, he was actually a, a college baseball player. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. His, his, his dad's a famous coach, a uh, famous football coach. In, yeah. Uh, Sonny yeah. Dykes is it's basketball to me. Okay. That's what it sounds like. Um, <laughs> he was, uh, I believe, Nick Foles' is, uh, offensive coordinator at Arizona. I feel um, like watching you pull these things. Sorry. It's like, I feel yeah. like I'm on the set of A Beautiful Mind or something like that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's nice of you to say. Yeah, that's nice like, to say. He's like Nick uh, Sirianni. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, I, I was, his dad was a restaurateur. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was, I was, I was talking to Matt before about Jaheim Bell from Florida state. Who's, who's really just kind of, I don't know. He's almost that like was a, the guy a, you liked. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's funny cause I was, I was knocking, uh, Bowers for being small. I feel like he's also yeah. small, right? But he is. He's, he's more like a, a wide receiver. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a player that actually, he's actually a, a wide receiver and at the combine he was asked about moving the tight end and he said no, but that's Johnny Wilson. Um, also a very made up name, but <laughs> yeah. carry on. So he's, he's Eagles the, had him in for a visit. Yeah. And if, if, if you're playing Madden yeah. and you draft Johnny Wilson or you have Johnny Wilson on your team, you would move him to tight end and he would go up from like a, a 73 to an 82. Over this is a Hakeem Butler. Type yes, guy. exactly. Um, so maybe if you're, you know, how he likes looking for, for, for those types, maybe he is obsessed a, with it. Yeah. Maybe there's like a, a, a conversion possibility there. Um, and then the last one I'll, I'll mention before we got, we got the thoughts from, from you guys, you were at the senior bowl, Ben Sinnott That's had, my a, guy. had a, a, a good week there. And I liked what he did last year at K state. Yeah. He's my guy from, uh, from this group. Solid production, uh, like the age profile, good like yards per catch, tested very well. And you watch his film and there's like he's running a diverse route tree, mm -hmm. catching balls in different parts of the field, running guys over. There's some fun. There's a fun game against uh, Iowa State when it's like all snow on the field and you can just you squint and you see the Brent Selleck in him. Ah, uh, mm. Played a little bit of fullback. I'm, I am uh, all about Ben Stennett as like he's probably my third favorite guy in the class. Walk on. Yeah. Look at what that. It's like a beautiful, beautiful mind, mind yes, over here. Yes, exactly. I uh, love that. Yeah, welcome. Uh, there's a, now there's the guy from Arizona who uh, I was joking <laughs> about ahead, uh, ahead of the show who I think played at like Colorado Pueblo or something like that for like four years and then walked on at Arizona. Uh, Tanner McLaughlin. And he's going to be like 25 or 26 as a rookie. Okay. A little Denny Watkins issue. But I got to tell you, I kind of liked him. He's like a big, big, uh, big, strong, powerful dude. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe a seventh round or undrafted. Throw a flyer on that guy. I don't mind that. Um, and then, I mean. What would you think of Kate Stover? I mean, I was underwhelmed. Because he's someone who, uh, you know, there is some buzz ab about him. Like he was, he was good at Ohio State. But there's right. thoughts that he could be better. Split in, in time in because the, he played some linebacker. Exactly. There's. Yeah, he was a, a good recruit um, coming out. Uh, there, there is some buzz about Kate Stover. I, 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 I certainly know that to be the case. And then I said Eric Ali. Is Eric All? I think <laughs> it's All. It's All. Okay, Eric All. Yes, you're correct. Eric All. Um, Eric All. I, I've uh, never seen that as a last name before. Uh, who I, I, -L -L. I recall him at uh, Michigan. He actually had a, a, a good year back in 2021. He's dealt with a lot of injury things. Um, injury things. He's dealt with a lot of injuries. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, no injury things. People around him have been getting injured yes, like crazy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's the uh, Andrew Sandejo. He's always having to uh, drive people to the hospital. <laughs> it's very time consuming. <laughs> Thank you. He misses games. Yeah. yeah. Um, Eric All is, uh, yeah. So Harbaugh, look, Jim Harbaugh knows tight ends. And he had Eric All playing meaningful snaps for him, um, was a real productive player at, at Michigan. I think there are some teams that might not have him medically cleared, um, or that might, I, I, sh I shouldn't say that. There are were, there were some teams that will have a medical red flag on him. There's a neck injury there. Uh, mm -hmm. But he's someone who, when you just say, all right, who, who can be a good player from this group if everything is okay health wise? And I think Eric Hall got some make you miss ability in the open field, yeah. I thought. Um, and then my last guy, Tip Raymond from Illinois, who like, I do not really necessarily care about like blocking technique from a, a tight end prospect. Like, I feel like that's a thing that you can learn as long as you've got the willingness and he is not a productive receiver. But if you're looking for like a seventh round Jack Stoll replacement, he mm. is a, a mountain of a man, six, five, 271, can move a little bit. And I think would, would fill that role. So what's your view? Do you think they draft a tight end this year? 
I think they do. Interesting. Um, okay. But I think probably more likely on day three. And what would your reaction be if they traded for Donald Parham on day three? What's our Donald Parham thing? Uh, <laughs> if the, uh, like that was the trade that I would make. That oh, day. yeah. It's your, that's <laughs> you your were bit. like, that's the most yeah, random. Parham watch. Yeah. yeah. See, I forget all the bits. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> what are we on? Like day 14 of Parham watch? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> My reaction will be a, a pat on the back. Pat on the back. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't like this tight end class. Uh, I'll put it that way. I've said that. Um, no, I, I like the top two guys. I, I like Bowers. I like Josh Sanders. And I think you can, you're fishing after, after, after that. Um, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I said on this show the other day, when you get to day three, there's like a misconception that you're looking for starters. Um, where I think tight end is a little different. And, 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 and I, I thought Bo made a really good, good point here. You can sign a Jack Soul type on the undrafted market. You can sign a blocking tight end typically on the undrafted market. Um, actually that's where a lot of these like depth tight ends come from that, that, that tier. So if I'm taking a day three tight end for the point that Bo mentioned that you find a lot of starting tight ends later in the draft, I want a guy who has some upside to start, not just someone who's fitting the role to be my blocking tight end. Hmm. I feel like this has been a little bit silly how much tight end talk we've had. Well, just we have you sitting here. I feel like so I'm much le- untapped potential. Yeah. I feel like I'm learning a lot. I, I I feel like the thing that I think of as a, as a just fan who doesn't know as much about tight ends is like, and remembering back to watching Dallas Goddard YouTube and crunching and getting ready for him to come. Like I feel like he was a pretty electric college tight end. I agree. Yes. Yep. And I feel like I didn't see that from anyone but Brock Bowers. Like I I feel like the Eagles shouldn't settle for at least in the second round, like you guys were talking about, yeah. like shouldn't settle for anyone that they don't think is going to be, like you said, a potential all pro pro, Bowl, like has that type of potential just right. because I feel like, you know, like you said, maybe, I don't know, even like with the Cowboys with Dalton Schultz and like these guys who like end up being pretty good, but like yeah. they're fine. They, they do the job. Like I'd rather go out and find a guy like that than fish in the second round for a position that feels like you can, find undrafted guys or, or whatever else. I don't know. I, I'm a little, I'm anti this, this tight end thing. Uh, Do you, uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, no, no. Cause I have a non tight end question. That well, I was, yeah, we're just going to ask your, your general, like uh round one hope. Jeez. I hope they trade up for Brock Bowers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you enjoy your life there. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I would be fine with that. I think, uh, you know, I really honestly have been doing uh, a lot of non Eagles draft crunching. So I don't have any like really informed opinions, but, I, I know you guys are on them getting a, a tackle. I heard Fran say that, and I trust Fran with mm-hmm. my life on this, I agree. In this wow. seat. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of Mount Joy fans are, are clinging on to uh, Fran now. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. He knows what he's talking about. Um, yeah, he seemed to think the value was was a tackle. So I'm interested in that. It's not, maybe not quite as exciting, but um, I know you guys talked about, I think Zach talked about wide receiver. Mm-hmm. It's always fun to get to... I think for me as a fan, like, you know, I, I do go really deep on this stuff, but mostly it's just me being like, they drafted this guy and then I go on YouTube and yeah. wide receiver YouTube is much more fun to watch than no like, doubt about it. You know, like yeah. a man shuffling and blocking yeah. another. Well, man and from- there's the, yeah, there is the balance of like, um, intellectually, I can believe that this is better for team building, but like, it's not going to give me the, the dopamine hit of watching, mm-hmm. you know, it's like you guys were talking Xavier about with, worthy. Yeah. Yeah. You guys were talking about with Saquon. It's like maybe that people always and you guys should, that's your job, like break down whether the contract makes sense, yeah. but I don't care if the contract doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You know, right. I'll, I'll be mad about that in two years when right. we can't sign the guy I want. <laughs> sure. But yeah, that's, <laughs> not your money. that's not, that's yeah. not my business. Yeah, exactly. What was uh, your question? Yeah. Uh, so a, a Mount joy slash Eagles question. I am curious, um, as someone who you're a, a big, a, a big Eagles fan. Uh, I follow the Eagles. Probably. I, I think about the Eagles more than is probably healthy to admit. Um, Jason Kelsey's time is always in demand, like mm. year round, but especially once training camp hits, once once the seasons begin. So when you're performing at the Man Center, and yeah. Jason Kelsey comes out uh, on stage with you, uh, what's going through your mind? Not just as a as like an artist, but as an Eagles fan. I mean, so pumped. I don't know. You know, like he's he's. I don't know what what's has what's hasn't been said about how awesome yeah, a guy right. he is. He's he's an amazing guy. Um, uh, I feel like he shows up for the city and and in such an important way, um, in a way that doesn't really happen in other cities. Like I, I think he's really made this 
he's part of what makes Philadelphia special is that he does things like that. Like truly, I think it's like, obviously so many people in that crowd are enormous fans of his and him doing that obviously helps. There was a, you know, I think he, there's a charitable aspect to that and yeah. he's done so much amazing work for the community. And then not just that, but like it's electric when he shows up somewhere, yeah. you know, and he knows that. And I think, uh, we're super grateful that he did that. And in my head, I'm just like, I can't even say what it probably was thinking in my head, but holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to say that. You can say that. Holy fuck. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Zach. I mean, Zach's Zach's usually the one who's working blue. So it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good for him to, oh. to not be the one. Yeah, I mean, he's like he shows up to WrestleMania. It's like um it's a Philly thing. He's there's a, de a degree to which uh you worry that he's like now the Philadelphia mascot. Sure. Uh, and not like living his own life, but he's also like doing all the fun things that yeah. like anybody would want to do. I, I haven't spoken to him recently, but I, I spoke to someone who knows him and I just cause I was since that show he's become one of the biggest celebrities right. at least in america but maybe like on the planet because of the taylor swift thing and uh i was just sort of like hey you know out of concern like is he okay yeah um and this person was like he's so grounded like i don't really notice too much of a difference i mean now he might be somewhere being like mm, yeah. but i don't know that for sure but it, that just spoke to, in that moment like if it were me i be having real problems i think like right. i couldn't no longer move around the way i used to and stuff like that so for him to still be showing up to these things when i imagine it just gets harder and harder and harder for him, for him to go anywhere mm. uh, i think speaks to yeah he's like one of the without question at this point beyond football one of the great philadelphians to ever exist my guess is is later on today he'll be scrolling on his phone he'll see this pop up on you know on his on his feed and he'll be like Oh man, if 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 Matt's doing shows, I I have this little podcast that you know I uh, you know if 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 you're on with the PHLY guys, you might as well stop well, by the Christmas the, album. Let's you might as well stop happening. by New Heights. Yeah, I was talking about the the podcast part of it, but yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I like the the uh, one of the great Philadelphians. You know, you hear you hear the stories of um, Benjamin uh, Franklin. Benjamin Franklin <laughs> opening up the windows and uh, being completely naked in front of everybody. Yeah, yeah. Those are the stories you hear, not yeah. like finding electricity. You're hearing about him opening up his window. Yeah, it was and... air dry himself open the <laughs> down. You know, in those Old are City. The stories yeah. I learned in school. Yeah. Well, I learned about flying the kite. Do some and, more research. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> what else is uh, <laughs> What else is on tap uh, moving forward here? Um. Yeah. I mean, for for Mount Joy, you mean, or just you life? I don't know. Beer. Um. Oh, so one thing, I guess, uh, so Mount Joy, I don't know, we're, we're playing all the shows that one could possibly play. Uh, it's fun. We're working on new music, start playing some new songs this summer. We'll be in Philly in like September, September, I think, yeah. um, which feels a world away, but I, I get know, the automated emails about it. All the time. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I'm glad that we're spamming you. Yes. Um, yeah, super excited for the summer to get out and tour, but I'm enjoying this little spurt here. Um, yeah, hanging out in Philly. What is the difficulty of uh, like trying to make new music while also touring? Yeah, I was just talking about this with someone yesterday. Uh, really hard. Um, and for me, like borderline impossible, which is why I like sort of intensely in the off, the non-music right. season. Right, the NPO. The non-touring yeah. season. Yeah, the NMO. Yes. Uh, we really go pretty hard at trying to record and, and get, get ideas down and, and record it because just the physical aspect of it. Like, you know, it's, you're not on a lot of sleep. It's just, you're not, I, I truly think that like, there's this uh, adage that you have to be like, you know, doing drugs or like whatever it is to be making great music. And for some people that, that might be true. But for me, it's like actually the healthier I am, the sort of like, that's when my creativity I think mm -hmm. is at its best, but not when I'm like, I can't think, or, yeah. you know, you're so fogged from sleep or whatever. So touring is sort of like that. It's like, um, you're, tired and and you just don't have a lot of time so i think yeah you're kind of cramming for the test well, do you also bit. then feel the pressure of like okay this is my time to be creative i have to be creative and then all of a sudden that becomes like that's why i'm here yeah <laughs> honestly i i mean it's not why i'm here I, lo I love your i love your show but that's why i listen to shows like this that's why i i do things where i really dive into sports and like i've tried to like explain to my wife and i think she's watching she she was commenting at one point but oh nice um, awesome. she was she jumped in on the uh the two green jerseys in Corinthians okay. stadium could be interesting. But, um, yeah, I just, it really helps me to like, like last night I was working on something and then got this opportunity and I was like, you know, you kind of hit a wall and you're like, okay, let's go find out about tight ends. Yes. You know, like 
I think it really helps to have things to reset and just be like, not take it so seriously because when you're doing that or having with anything, I think if that could be advice people could take, it's like, I think when you get writer's block or any sort of block creates creatively, it's like, choose you're just trying too hard. You know, it's like you're pushing too hard and what makes to me like creativity is spontaneous. It's like, right. it, it comes from this place of sort of being open to anything and, and not being like pressing or something like that. So having things like this is, is huge. I don't mean I to. I feel that intensely. Yeah. I, I, I say this as a shout out to the sickos, uh, certainly not, not to diminish your amazing work. Uh, Please one do. Of the, one of the top artists um, <laughs> out there. But, um, you know, Bo sends me the text last night that you're coming on. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. I told someone we're, 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 we're going to have Matt Quinn on from Mount Joy. And the person's response was, I loved his shield song. <laughs> See, there you go. Yes. So that's a shout out. That's that's one that only the and the Marissa one. Yes. Yeah. That the, the signature. Which I mean, I, I told it before, but the Marissa, like the Shield one, I was like, oh man, like I, I kind of want to, I want kind of want to reach out to Matt about this. I'm a little bit nervous. Yeah. And then the Marissa one, and like, the, and we, it, it's 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 similar to the conversation we had with Les about like not wanting to bother people yeah. as a reporter. Like I was like, I didn't want to bother you again, and just popped in. You did it all on your own. Unbelievable. What a what a when, guy. Whenever, guys. I I truly like. I'm, I was telling them earlier, I'm, I'm a nervous flyer. When I'm like in turbulence, I put on birds of, or uh, DHLY okay. or, okay. or whatever. <laughs> it's okay. We're what, not going to get sued. Whatever yeah. it's called. Uh, For that. PHLY, put, put it on. and uh, That means so much to us, seriously. Yeah, yeah I, I do. And uh, it's like sort of a, I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird, but it's, it's, a, it's a happy place for me for sure. Well, Nick Sirianni, for me, looks, the, yeah. it, it is the same. Sorry, go ahead. Nick Sirianni looks at the flight attendant, and if the flight attendant's not not worried, people then. say that. But like, <laughs> I, like someone said that to me. It's, it's sort of a thing people say, but it's like you look at the flight attendant. The flight attendant is a is a paid actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I'm they can't be that, yeah. they can't be freaking yeah. out. <laughs> that would be that would be like grounds for dismissal. <laughs> like you know, like they literally are paid to not freak out. Yeah. It's like look at the. I'm trying to scan like the regular people. Yeah. You know, like on the. I think I sort of told this on the flight home from Disney World. Uh, Jane was like was not having it with the landing process. Okay, and it was actually funny. I don't. I haven't talked to Tim about this, but they were sitting right behind Tim McManus. And Jane is just like, as as the plane starts descending, she's like, "Get me out of here! I I want to get out of here. Let me let me off. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. Let me out of here." And it's you know, it's it's like it's okay, it's okay because it's a three year old. But like to imagine if that was an adult, <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. flight attendant, like, like, yeah, like, exactly. That's like, ah, get me out of here! Get me out of here! Yeah, my funny plane story recently was uh, my my six year old son had to uh, had to go pee, and uh, I was I was I was like, "You can go there yourself." And then person was like person who I was on the flight with was was saying like wait yeah walk with him there I was like where's he gonna go he's on a plane <laughs> but yeah I, I walk I walked into the yeah I walked him in and by that outside. you mean Emily <laughs> no it was actually Sloan uh -oh. <laughs> so, so uh -oh. his, his five-year-old sister but uh -oh. Emily Emily was uh was napping at the time yeah oh, nice. so, oh, yeah. so you left Sloan alone uh well Emily was at the seat yeah yeah of but, course sure well, that's funny all right well Matt thank you so much Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to, to Friday night. And that'll do it for this episode of the PHLY Eagles podcast. Back tomorrow, talking Zach's favorite position, interior offensive line. <laughs> We're going to have, I think, Brandon Thorne on to, yeah, to that's talk an about expert. the sickos. So uh, looking forward to that. Back at noon, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks, everybody, for watching and listening. Thanks to Julia. We'll see you tomorrow. And as always, we love you. <laughs> Silly like the mayor. 